Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have a long-awaited, at least by me, unboxing for you today. And I believe that this may be the first unboxing video of this relatively new release. Lucky Forward, Patton's Third Army in Lorraine, September to December 1944. This is part of the Grand Operational Simulation, or GOSS, series from Decision Games. Designer Joe Yaust and developer Doug Johnson. This is the latest version, uh, the latest game in the series. There are three others, Atlantic Wall, Hurtgen Hell's Forest, and Vakdam Rhein. Uh, Vakdam Rhein is complicated enough. The, the situation with that is complicated enough that I don't want to fit it in this video. Um, there's multiple versions of it. Some of these games are named after SPI Classics. They are not the same system. Um, let's have a look at Lucky Forward and see what we get. This is the sort of game box size decision box. It's super heavy, actually. Um, and if we look here, we're going to see that there are five map sheets, 30, uh, 360 die cut counters, updated Goss system rules. Updating the Goss system rules is a big deal. Um, the, the rules themselves have been available for some time on Decision Games website, these new, this new version of the rules. Um, we have two to six players, Playing time, 8 to 100 hours, which sounds absolutely correct. Um, this is a battalion-scale game, but there you will see units broken down all the way to platoons in some cases. Um, hex scale is one mile per hex, and there are three turns per day. And, of course, we have a pretty big map area here, which I'm absolutely not going to be able to show you today. Uh, we'll take a look at the maps, but I can't show you the whole thing right, right now. So let's look at what we have here. Um, I don't know if this is actually the case, um, that decision is no longer printing domestically. Um, however, I can tell you that it does feel like the case. Um, they changed their box stock, they changed their counter stock, um, so we'll see. So what we have here is a ziploc giant chunk of stuff, ziploc um, shrink wrapped. Uh, we have some booklets. Okay, including a somewhat damaged um, uh, historical background booklet that, interesting, <laughs> right out of s &T because you can see it even retains the s &T page numbers. It's not a 40-page booklet, it's about 16. Nevertheless, it's always nice to see this kind of thing, and I'm not really going to fuss too much about that. Here is the, let me get this out of the way. Here are the scenario rules. Okay, so this is the game-specific rule book. Much of this book should be uh, scenario information. Um, it does appear that there are about 16 or 17 pages of game-specific rules. Really, that's probably 14 or 15 because uh, there's two pages that are table of contents in the front. And you can see this is the new style of decision games layout that we've seen in different games. Um, you can see that there are four full-size maps, one map that's kind of full-sized, and then this extension. So there's a lot of map area here. This map area does link up to the Vakdam Rhine and Hurtgen Forest map areas. Um, and then we have some scenarios. I have already looked at these. These scenario rules also are available online on Decision's website. Okay. Okay. Uh, Battle for Gramercy Forest Introductory Scenario. See Player Aid Card 2. We'll look at that when we get to it. There's a September scenario. It begins on Game Day 1, GD1, which is the 5th of September, 1944. And it ends on the night game turn of, of Game Day 26. So this is actually quite a long scenario. And then you can link the September, October, November, December scenarios all together to get a whole campaign. Um, because, and the, the whole rest of this book is um, scenario rules. And we're at, what is this, 48 pages? That's what it feels like. It is, in fact, 48 pages. And we're on a fairly thick uh, rule book stock, full color, um, pretty good use of color at that. So there's some, a bunch of important things out in red here, for example. Now this is another one that we've been waiting for for literal eons the new version of the Goss system rules. Um, I will be blunt and tell you that the rule book, the Goss system rule book that released in, for example, Atlantic Wall is embarrassingly bad. Um, it is 
probably not the worst war game rule book I have ever used or read, but it is definitely the worst one that I have ever spent that amount of time with. Nevertheless, despite the terribleness of its rules, I think there's a really good game in here and a really strong simulation in here. So we, those of us with that opinion, uh, we're really looking forward to this new version of the rules, which we had been promised for a long time. Now, this is an 80-page rule book, right? With larger print, to be fair, than the previous edition. Uh, it's been completely differently laid out. I have glanced at this, um, and it looks like... Um, so there had been a previous revision that was a big improvement. This looks like it's a further big improvement on top of that. I'm very glad to see this, and I can't wait to get into this. So, new Goss system rules. Again, available online at Decisions website. We have a bag of baggies, which is an actual bag. I mean, this is a huge game. I'm not. I'm not putting this in baggies. And there's two ten-sided dice. This is a pers It's a D10 and percentile uh, based system. All right. So in the box we have a stack of things, which are like box size. So 11 by 17 size. So let's see what we have here. We have here a Lucky Forward September scenario setup map. So this tells you. You are given a decent amount of leeway in terms of the setup. So what this is telling you is that these formations need to set up in these areas as designated. Okay, and then we have here a November scenario. You can see U.S. forces pushing to the east. Okay, and again, these are the setup cards, which is a replication of not the entire map, but a good chunk of the map. Um, and then here we have the December scenario setup, where uh, U.S. forces under Patton, of course, have pushed uh, the Germans back to this point. Um, we have charts and tables. Now, I'm going to quibble the new charts and tables, and there are some differences. Um, and I can tell you that those differences were necessary because there were some typos on the last version. Um, uh, are not available on Decisions website, and I, I think that's lame, and I wish they would not do that. Um, unit nationality, political affiliation charts. I'm not sure you have British and Free French in here. I guess we'll find out in a minute. You might, though. Uh, because one of the things is it's kind of given you the general situation in this area rather than sort of a focused campaign. So there is kind of a sandbox element to the Goss games. Not in, in the system as such, but in terms of the packages that they provide for us. So this is like the unit ID chart, right? This tells you how... Uh, battalions break down. Um, here's company into companies and into zero step units. Uh, here's all our symbols. Here's all our AFV uh, silhouettes. Here's the regular unit chart. On the back of this, we have the okay. So basically, most of the game runs off of this table, this card. You have here your ground assault table, all the different shifts and stuff. Um, there is additional tables that will be necessary. Presumably we will get to them uh, that are the logistics tables and stuff like that. Uh, most of the game runs off of here. Okay, so we have that. We better have more than one or I'm going to be slightly irritated. It really needs to be more than one, especially in a game this expensive. All right, so we have rec these are general record tracks and they are broken down by a high level formation. So we have the 3rd Army, the 1st and 7th Armies, then we have losses, replacements, and uh, for air points. Air system in Goss is relatively abstract, especially considering how uh, very detailed the rest of the game system is. Um, here we have the German record tracks for 1st Army, 5th Panzer Army, 7th and 19th Armies, uh, air points, losses, replacements. Um, the air system is quite asymmetric, as you'd expect for a game on this subject at this time. All right, so we have maps. Oh, boy. Okay, so this is bundled together in a bit of a weird way. Um, now, the map art here is by, I assume, actually. I, I haven't verified this looking at the credits. But Joe Yaus, the designer, does the maps and counters himself. And I happen to really like the maps and counters that have been provided in this system so far. Um... So here, for example, is that little uh, extension map. Here we have a separate game turn record track, which takes us from uh, September 5th all the way to December 15th, it looks like. Um, in previous games in this series, this was, at least in Hurtgen Forest, this was actually part of the game map except that if you're like me, you cut it off so you could fit the game map on a standard size table. 
Um, so yeah, we have a whole bunch of maps here. And again, I, I like the map art um, in these. Um, they are quite detailed maps. You'll notice that there's a lot of these little triangles. Those are going to represent probably mountain peaks in this case. But there are also observation points that are significant for uh, the observation rules. I just want to make sure I have the right number of maps. And then we are good to go. And I, I hope you can get some sense of, of what the maps look like on the video. And here's, of course, Metz. A lot of the campaign will circle around the pretty determined defense that the Germans put forward in Metz. Um, and then it's on the Moselle. Is the Rhine on the map? I would assume that it is. It'll be on the eastern maps. I don't want to paw through this right now. So, um, and again, I think we're going to get uh, some additional scenarios for this that Joe has promised. And, uh, and eventually we're going to get a linking scenario that will allow you to put all of these games together. Uh, they do have a contiguous, and by all of these games, I mean this game, Lucky Forward, um, Hertken Hell's Forest and Vakdam Rhine. They, there's a contiguous area. You can set these all up together. Uh, but they don't all happen at the same time. So uh, Hertken Forest happens, I think, starting around September. Um, and, but of course, the Battle of the Bulge that Vakdam Rhine simulates does not start until December 16th or something like that. Something like that. All right, we have one more thing to look at, and that is this big shrink wrapped. A bundle of stuff. I don't know what's in here other than that I can see the counters are in here. So let's open her up. Now, <clears throat> interestingly, um, this is different counter stock than has been used in decision games as a whole in the past and uh, different counter stock than appeared in the previous games in the series. Um, I like to organize this series in those container store trays that I've shown off in the Wargaming storage videos. Um, I may circle back to that for this game, and I actually may circle back to that for Goss as a whole. Um, there's a lot going on here in this series, um, lest anybody tell you otherwise. It's a very detailed rule system. It's very complicated. Um, nevertheless, it's, it's not unplayably complicated, and it's not the most complicated game system ever or anything. It's just that you had a relatively disorganized rulebook in the first few games that really hampered um, the adoption of a system that I think has a lot of simulation value and a lot of really interesting things going on. Okay, so uh, sheet one of eight. Um, and we have uh, a relatively thick brown core stock, half-inch counters. Um, here we have... U.S. units, uh, I see uh, 82nd and 101st Airborne. Oh, that's something you can do here, is that you can decide not to do Market Garden and to support Patton in the South with the Airborne Divisions. Um, that's that's what I mean when I say there's there's some sandbox elements to, to this game and to the series as a whole. Okay, so here we have uh, more U.S. units um, in, in, and some free French. One of the only games that I know of that actually gives you the free French commandos that landed at, on D-Day. Um, Atlantiqua has a, unit, uh, a counter for them. Um, okay, so here we have um, leaders. Leaders include uh, Patton, Hayslip, Wood, Gro, and Gavin, uh, and Taylor. <coughs> and then we have some general markers here. And then the rest of this sheet is U.S. breakdowns. Um, Goss gives you a ton of flexibility in terms of breaking your battalions down. You can break them down into companies and in some cases even into what are called Z-step units. They're zero-step units. They are functionally platoons. And in some cases it's smart to do that because it's smart to say, hey, this unit needs some armor support. I'm going to send a platoon of tanks over to support them in whatever it is that they're doing. Um, here we have <coughs> start of the Germans. Here's some German leaders. Uh, here we have some Waffen-SS. Um, I'm seeing 2nd SS Panzer, uh, that's probably 2nd SS Panzer Army, uh, 10th SS Panzer, maybe it's not, 17th SS, uh, I see, um, a lot of some, some, some static units, some of these fortress battalions up here, not sure what the yellow stripe means, that might mean that they are training units, that is something that has appeared in the series before, uh, specifically in Hurtgen Forest. All right, here we have uh, more Germans in various, um, in what look like infantry divisions, and uh, some Luftwaffe ground units, cream of the German uh, armed forces. Uh, here we have, so the, the German fortifications in 
Atlantic wall are in this sort of bright red. And I see that they've brought that in here as well. And, and in general, fortifications are in either bright red or bright blue. We'll presumably see some uh, Allied dug-in positions in a minute here. We've got some miscellaneous U.S. units, which presumably got added at the last minute. Uh, now we're into the markers. We have delay markers. You can, delay markers are something you can do to kind of bung the roads up for the opposing forces. Um, you can dismount uh, motorized units, uh, which affects their combat, but also means they don't need fuel anymore. Um, here's a few more miscellaneous U.S. units. Can't wait to organize this thing. Um, here we have some mode markers. We have combat reserve on the front side and then strategic move on the other side. Uh, these would be the Allied ones. These would be the German ones. Uh, we got some more forts. These are presumably forts that go in some specific locations. Uh, here we have the generic marker sheet for the Goss series. And this would be the new one, I presume. Uh, yeah, okay. So we have these spade markers. And they're, they're blue on one side and black on the other. Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. These are on different counter stock than the other ones. These are not on the thick counter stock. That is very interesting. These are on the same counter stock that the older games were. And I'm guessing that's because they printed these in quantity. This might be copyright 2018. Atlantic Wall came out after that. These might be the same counter sheets that appeared in Atlantic Wall. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so we got a basically an Allied one and a German one, but then if you flip them over, they're this, they're the, the the red spades are blue on the reverse side, and the blue spades are red on the reverse side. And the spades mean uh, uh, they can be used to indicate a number of different things. The primary use is to indicate lost steps. So uh, fatigue and uh, some more mode markers down here. Very interesting. Here's some more. Artillery shifts. Okay, cool. So one of the things, there has been continuous tweaking of the Goss game system ever since the system was released. And I, 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 I feel like that's coming to, if not an end, at least a point at which the game system is reasonably mature and no serious changes are being made anymore. But one of the serious changes that had uh, occurred in the past was that you could originally... Um, so if you barrage a unit, you could put an artillery shift on it, which then provides a combat modifier. But you could only do that once. You couldn't have two artillery shifts uh, at one point. Originally, when the Game Boy system debuted, you could have two artillery shifts. Then you couldn't. Then they backed off on that, and now you can again. So that's what these double artillery shifts are for, which is awesome. And then you've got ammo depleted on the back. And then we have some more player aids. So let's look at that. A lot of counters here. Uh, not sure I've ever seen... I probably have seen a game in which there's two separate counter stocks, actually. I think uh, I think the Men of Iron Tri-Pack is like that. All right. So we've got a random spacer in the back here. And then we have a sequence of play card. Okay, it's always great to see a sequence of play card. Okay. All right. I mean, you could photocopy these, but it does kind of look like there's only one apiece, which I, is not something I approve of in a game this expensive. Uh, it is not a cheap game, and I don't want to tell you what the suggested retail was, but it's well over $100, because I don't remember exactly what I paid for, because I paid for it months ago. But it's it's expensive. It's well over $100. Uh, okay, sequence of play card. Great that we have this. We'll have to photocopy it to get more. Um, air operations procedures. So all your air stuff is on this card, pretty much, which is actually nice. They, they've really... Quibbles about not enough player aids aside, they really have improved the player aids here. Um, here is your logistics procedures with all the logistics tables. So this is the kind of thing you do once a day, and then you have three turns in the day. You have an, Each day has an AM turn, a PM turn, and a night turn. Okay. Uh, here's your barrage stuff, actually. Fire support mission procedures. And everything is actually laid out with with sequences for all this. This is a huge improvement. Wow. Okay, stacking and movement procedures. It's great to have... Stacking is very involved in this game. It's probably got the most complicated stacking rules I've ever seen in any game. Worse... I don't want to say worse, but more complicated than Europa. In, in here, they actually make sense, though. Um, you have a card for that. Very nice. And a movement terrain effects chart. On here, we have the command and gens procedure. Not sure what that means. Uh, but but there's also a fairly intricate command system in this series. And that gives you a player aid for that. 
Here is a uh, bridge demolition and engineering stuff. Looks like, and unit replacement, so you know how to replace your units. Um, Three-step hybrid units. So there are hybrid units that are like, they have an armored component and an infantry component or something like that. This tells you how to deal with that. Uh, modes, here is a modes player aid. That is fantastic. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, here's your airdrop stuff. In fact, here is your, ooh, okay, this is weather. Um, but then on here you have your airdrop procedure uh, where you have your air assault uh, sequence. Now I'll be very curious to see how that's handled here because, uh, ooh, good question. Um, I don't know if there were airdrops in this uh, particular area historically in this period, but I don't think so. Um, and I do have the aerosol rules for Atlantic Wall, but those were night drops. These are day drops. Like the Market Garden drops were were day drops, dropped in broad daylight to generally no with generally no problems. There were some problems, but not that many. Not compared to the night airdrops in uh, Normandy, the night the morning before D Day, or certainly the airdrops on Sicily, which were uh, a disaster. All right, ground assault resolution. Here's a ground assault card. There's a big elaborate lovely crunchy uh, ground assault procedure in here too so um that is the entire contents it appears at a glance at least that i'm not missing anything or anything like that which does happen with these things sometimes um for lucky forward um super happy to finally get this thing in my hands um it is a game i have lo been looking forward to for years um it is I won't promise anything specific, but uh, I, I don't be shocked if you see more video on this or the Goss series. And it's probably going to be this because it's the, it's the new shiny uh, from me in the future. So um, so thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, do check out the uh, Patreon in the video description. Also linked in the video description is the Ardwell Flare merch store where you can get cool T-shirts and mugs and stuff. So check that out. Uh, do give the video a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments or requests or whatever in the comments to the video, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would like to thank you all again for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.